Hello, this is Ronnie Mervis from Mervis Diamond Importers, and we're going to talk about how to select an engagement ring. Presenting a diamond to the lady of your dreams is a very exciting thing to do. Well, in the old days, the Egyptians thought that there was a vein which ran from the left finger to the heart. It was a vein of love. And that is from where the idea comes that you need to put an engagement ring on the finger. Since then, the finger has moved. It's become the fourth finger of the left hand. But nevertheless, the engagement ring is the ultimate symbol of love and oneness and uh, eternity. Now, I don't think that anybody needs to have a preconceived notion of what they wanted to spend. Get an idea of what you want to see for the money and look at something in that range. For the regular guy who's going to give a diamond to his girl, it's a question more of giving what you want. De Beers, who is the big name in the diamond industry, has come out with its so-called convention. About two months' salary is the right amount to spend, but we don't go with that either. Because if your two months' salary is tied up in other things, you shouldn't spend money which is going to put you in the poorhouse. And on the other hand, if one takes into account one's style of life, two months' worth of income may not be enough to buy the diamond, which faces up well with today's conspicuous consumption society. So I think just look around and see what your friends and their fiancés, wives, girlfriends are wearing. Get an idea of what's going on around town and try and go for that too. And after you've seen a few diamonds and you like them, and the place that you're going to buy it from gives you a range of prices, you can look at them and knock out the top price, knock out the lowest price, look at one something in the middle and say, is that affordable to me? And if the answer is yes, go with it. Amazing thing about women's fingers is that they're all pretty much the same size. Our standard size is six and a half, and we find that with most women, irrespective of whether they're tall or short or fat or thin, most fingers are about a six and a half or within a very narrow range from six and a half. A standard sized ring, which is six and a half, can easily be reduced to a five or increased to an eight. Now, if you can get her finger sized before you come in, great. Maybe you can steal her favorite ring for a day or so, sneak it off to your favorite jeweler, get it sized, and then you've got it. But if we don't have the finger size, it doesn't matter because we're just going to guess. The six and a half will be approximately right, and if it's not, we can do the fine adjustment after you've given it to her. We see so often when guys get to the point of buying the diamond, they're in a slight state of panic, and they always bring along her best friend. Whatever advice they want to give you, take, because there is no right answer, there is no wrong answer, and if the best friend tells you this is what I think she likes, she's right. But if it's all up to you, go simple and try not to compete with the center by having too much stuff around on the sides. Well, the center stone is the most important part of it. Shape is an important issue, and it's something that we should take into account in determining what matches the center. If typically it's going to be what is known today as a three stone ring, you need to match the shape of the side stones to the center. But you don't have to do that all the time because not every ring is a so-called three stone ring. These days, fashion calls for a fairly substantial center stone. Most of the metal is in platinum. The classic is the plain solitaire, where you get a diamond, which is a major focus. It catches all the attention, and it's mounted very simply in a beautiful platinum mounting. Most people want the biggest diamond they can get for the money, and so I would say go for one that fits a big look. But don't go for size at the expense of quality. You want a high color, you want a good clarity, and most important of all of those, you want one that's cut perfectly so that you get the maximum brilliance out of it. So just be flexible, see a whole bunch of them, and then find the one that's just right. If she doesn't like it, I'm sure they will take it back and allow you to start again. And in fact, a very good question to ask in the purchasing process is, what happens if she doesn't like it? What is your policy? Will you take it back? Will there be a charge? How much? If she'd like to pick something else, what do you say about it? And get that squared away in the beginning. Another thing I'd like to tell you is that as long as I've been in the diamond engagement business, we find that no matter what the guy thinks, no matter how nervous he is about what she likes or doesn't like, will accept or won't accept, in fact, when he gives her the diamond ring, the emotion rides so high that he could buy her the worst diamond in the world and it would be perfect. Very few women ever tick the guy and say, you complete klutz, what did you get? Get out of here. All of a sudden it becomes just great and did you do this all by yourself, just for me. That's fantastic. I love you and it's perfect. And gentlemen, one last word of advice. This is a gift from you to her. So make it a pleasant experience. Let the joy of purchasing equal the joy of giving, 
equal the joy of receiving. Don't make it too big a project or you'll ruin all the fun. I wish you all the best in your lives together.